well, I came back to the firm. Uh, I got the family with me, but they're in the burn. Uh, I come back to the firm. I know I tell everybody all the time, hey, uh, after the horses train, we like to get a look at them, see how they ate their breakfast, ate their lunch, see if there's any heat anywhere, if they seem comfortable, if they seem happy, anything seems out of the ordinary. You know, these caretakers see these horses every single day, so they should know if something's up. Um, so we like to, you know, yesterday before I left, I walked up and down all the shed rows and talked to the trainers and the caretakers and asked if there was any issues. Uh, one horse lost a shoe, looked like a quarter crack was coming in a three-year-old, no, nothing too, too serious. Um, but these are the things that, that I want to make sure I do. Um, you know, um, uh, so I'm here at the barn today. Amy and I went and looked at a bunch of horses. Everything seems good. Everybody seems like they ate well. Uh, I did want to answer a question. So I got a couple of emails and I answered them. And then I realized after I answered a couple of them, they were asked for different reasons, but they were the same questions, a very overarching question. And that is, what are we doing with the horses and why? Very good question. Uh, in regards to somebody with the two-year-olds, obviously it's business as usual. Uh, we fully expect that we'll be racing in the summer. Um, I doubt there'll be any interruptions to the two-year-old schedules. Uh, maybe in New York, it's some places. I I'm concerned Yonkers isn't going to open for a while. I could be dead wrong, and I hope I am, but I just got an eerie feeling that Yonkers is going to be a while opening up. I believe, as I said in many videos and emails and, and uh, on Facebook last week, I believe Ohio will be opening up the mid part of May towards the end, maybe. Uh, shortly followed by, I'm told, the Meadows uh, has, a, has a plan to open up. Uh, now, remember, it was funny. I watched, a, it wasn't funny, but I watched the address from the president the other night. He gave, obviously, the power to open up to the governors, but also said that the governors can use it in a more jurisdictional way, so county by county if they want. So I, I, was, I was a little surprised that people were concerned the Poconos wouldn't open up. It's not a very big place. Why couldn't they open up? I get to thinking this could be a casino problem, right? A lot of the, a lot of the racetracks are still um, hooked onto the casinos and draw from the casinos. Here in Ontario, we went through all this where we lost our, our connection to the casinos, and now we are subsidized by the government. And that is why Ontario can't open up first. Because this is an arm of the Ontario government now, and they cannot be seen as being going back to work too early. Imagine now if the premier says, okay, we'll go back to work. Then Jim Lawson and Jessica Buckley set out this plan. And we rush back to the races. Everybody plans on adhering to social distancing. Uh, they have, you know, I believe, and I think it's a great idea. I said it, and a number of people have. If you have five races, say at four o'clock in the afternoon, five races at eight o'clock at night, or six and six, or whatever you want to do. Um, I think that would accommodate well, but what happens if somebody gets sick? What happens if there's a, a quick spike in COVID-19 uh, because of going back to the races? Now you got outcry from the general public and now you have outcry from society. Now people are angry. It looks poorly on us, but you know who else it looks poorly on? It's the premier. Now he can say, well, I gave everybody the option to go back if they thought they were safe, but ultimately it would fall on leadership, right? No matter what happens in this barn, it's my fault. I, I'm the, the leader of the stable um, when it comes to, um, you know, the safety of the horses and, the, and our, and our, and our um, trainers and our, and our caretakers. Uh, we're doing all weekend. <coughs> and it's the same on a much bigger scale of, of the premier. If something happens in horse racing, there'll be a lot of people. And you know, you know, look at all the Facebook doctors we have now. Everybody's an epidemiologist and a doctor and they're all sharing all these articles and everybody is so intelligent about how the virus works, but nobody really knows, right? So I think everybody's trying to, everybody's trying to err on the side of caution. So in that regard, I believe uh, when Ohio makes a decision to open up, that may fall back on the governor somewhat, but it would fall back on the commission, fall back on the racetrack, it would fall back on the horse racing community. Whereas here, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate connection, because we are a subsidy of the government, we are an arm of the government now, the AGCO is, uh, Ontario Racing is, it would fall back on the, on the leadership of the Ontario government, much more than it would Ohio, Pennsylvania, or any of the likes. So for that in that regard, I believe Ontario is going to be very skittish 
Uh, they're going to wait. I think what you're going to see is they're going to wait for a place like Ohio and Pennsylvania to open up, see how that 14-day incubation period goes, see if there's any concerns after that, and then I think they'll have a plan to start full. But I think they'll be in works and in talks, hoping, uh, optimistically hoping it works out well, which I believe it will. It worked out well in Ontario. Everybody thinks that, uh, not everybody, some people may think that Ontario stopped racing abruptly because of COVID-19, because the social distancing wasn't working. There was some concerns. That wasn't it at all. Nobody that I'm aware of got sick in horse racing. Nobody nobody tested positive that I'm aware of. You know, you hear rumblings of this caretaker over at this farm or another farm, but nothing for certain. And certainly nothing happened on the premises of Mohawk that I'm aware of. The problem was is that the supporting staff, the people that collect the urine, the blood, and the test burn weren't going to show up. They were at a skeleton crew the last night or two at Mohawk, and they said they may not be able to show up the following day. Now, we could have at that point implemented, hey, can we have a veterinarian coming? I'm sure we could have got around it, but this is when COVID-19 was just dropping on everybody and there was so much terror and nobody really knew. Uh, so I think they did the right thing. They just shut it down. And it's been extremely um, tenuous, been extremely uh, stressful for everybody, but everybody in the world. And I think when racetracks start to come back, they are going to be very aware of the fact that if anybody gets sick because of these gatherings, because of racing, it will reflect poorly on everybody. And if somebody gets sick in Ohio, it most definitely will suspend any sort of operations of coming back um, until it's abundantly clear that it's safe for Ontario. Everybody's starting to work up, work, get back to work, or the, the economy starting to, to uh, fire back up is terrifying for everybody in a number for a number of reasons. And it's easy for people to sit back on social media and say, oh, it's ridiculous. You should stay home for another six weeks. You know what? I don't. I don't want to get into the the politics of the or, or the, um, you know, the medical side of COVID nineteen. But I think we're all aware. Most of us, some of us watching this video, how poverty feels, how how not having a job to go to feels, and the uncertainty of a future. You know, you think about it. If you're a restaurant, and you're not open for two months. There's a good chance you'll never open again, right? Reality, and that's the reality of the economy. And there's always going to be the argument that, well, you know, it was somebody put it quite cleverly on Facebook. Might have been Kyle put it quite cleverly on Facebook. I've been broke before, but I've never been dead before. You're right. But the survivability rate is well over 98%. People would say, well, the numbers aren't right. and I don't really care. At the end of the day, uh, I do care. I don't mean to say I don't care. But at the end of the day, um, the ability to return to work will be up to uh, our leaders and our medical community, scientists. Um, and when they say it could be safe or will be safe to go back to work if you adhere to strict protocols and social distancing, then that's exactly what most everybody will choose to do. Um, and hopefully it works. So I think that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna see Ohio, and Ohio, maybe Pennsylvania. I could be wrong, could be Illinois. I don't think New Jersey's opening up May 1st. Hats off to Jeff Gorell. I think he did a great job in saying they would. I don't think that they will though. I think it'll be closer to somewhere around, and I, I would have to imagine that it has a lot to do with what New York says, right? They're right beside each other. So there's a lot of politics going on. Uh, I, I can, I can, I would bet any amount of money that um, Ontario will not be the first to open up. They don't want to take the first step. I think somewhere like Ohio will, and it's just that Ohio, uh, how do I say this without sounding crass? Ohio puts a higher premium. Uh, and a lower risk risk assessment, I guess is the best way to put it, on on opening up for their horse racing community and agriculture and the supporting industries with it. You know, if you're growing any sort of um, hay or feed that comes with uh, racing horses, then you're hurting, right? And if you're a trainer, you know all about the world of hurt we're in. Um, I think everybody wants to get back to work in a safe manner, and it won't be up to me or anybody else. It'll be up to somebody with probably a number of documents hanging on their wall um, to make that decision. So, um, where was I? I lost track again. Maybe I do babble too. Um, oh my God, I spent nine minutes talking about this. I didn't even get to what I meant to talk about. So what are we doing? What's a stable doing? Why are we training our horses like this? Very simple. We're training our horses in this manner to keep them tight, to keep them sharp. People believe, oh, they're training horses, but you don't really understand sometimes that these are athletes, right? And these are, these are athletes that are working hard right now, and they can't sit at home. You can't, uh, you can't have athletes 
working hard and then say, okay, just go sit in that couch for three, four weeks or walk around your house or do whatever you're doing and then come back and we're going to start playing baseball or basketball. It doesn't work that way. Um, people, any athletes have to stay in shape. And to stay in shape, you have to work a little bit. And I believe if you turn a horse out right now, um, turn a horse right out, out right now, look at a horse like Ohio, right? Globetrotting is nowhere near ready to go. She's three weeks away. They're potentially five weeks from racing. So those Ohio horses, there's not enough, not enough mathematical time to make an even remote argument that they could be turned out. You can back off and train them a little bit. We didn't train, uh, spend that money uh, hard this weekend. We didn't train. We trained them all in 20. Uh, but we'll come back Wednesday with them in, in some of them in a, in a little uh, a little harder set. Um we won't be uh, training any of them over and over and over and over again. We don't want to overtrain them, but at the same time, we need to keep some sort of muscle tone on them, right? Some sort of uh, endurance stamina in these horses. And to do that, like every athlete, you have to work a little bit. So um, there's a thin line between overtraining, training too hard on a smaller track, and uh, having the horses prepared. Uh, somebody had sent me an email. It was well thought out, and it was all broke down. Um, about how many races there are, how many stake races there are, the ability to race when we come back, what racing might look like. I, I'd refrain from trying to extrapolate any data and say this is what racing could look like because no one knows. There isn't a human being on this planet that knows what racing is going to look like when we get back. Are we going to try and race more, spread out four or five races at a time throughout the afternoon and evening? It's a possibility. I have no idea. Are we going to race more dates, less dates, some tracks? Are they going to open? Think about this. Mohawk can't open before London or Grand River or whoever's supposed to race right now. They all have to open together because you're going to have this flood of B-track horses into Mohawk. And they're all off. They have to change the qualifying dates. They have to, they have to push that, that line back. It's just there's a lot to do. And nobody knows exactly how they're going to, be, how they're going to go about doing it. How's the baby races going to look? Usually they have what? 12, 13 races of baby races the first or second week? How are they possibly going to do that? You have to get baby races in before you can start racing stake races. There are so many uh, variables and intangibles that we could talk about for hours. Really, it doesn't matter what I think because it's going to be up to somebody else. Sure, we're a stakeholder. We'll probably be asked at some point, I would hope. But for now, we haven't. So uh, just so many things up in the air. And I hope everybody, please understand I'm doing the best I can, right? I'm trying to make sure our horses are ready to go when they're supposed to be ready to go, that they stay in some sort of professional form. Um, and and I, I'm trying to keep our clients informed and do the best I can, make sure I answer all the questions. I never even thought about this. Somebody asked the question, I answered it. These are athletes. We're trying to keep them in shape to race. Then somebody else asked about a two-year-old. Somebody else asked about White Tiger, who's turned out. Why don't we turn the other horses out? It's great. These are all great questions. I don't mean to sound arrogant, ignorant, or condescending. These are, are, are very valid questions that are very difficult to answer because I don't know the finish line, right? What if we race August 1st? You know, everybody's broke. Nobody knows what's going on. There's still no vaccine. There's still social distancing. I mean, it, this could turn bad or it could turn, turn good. And I, it won't turn good, but it could turn bad or it could turn better. If Pennsylvania and Ohio get back mid part of May, everything goes good for two weeks. Ontario starts up. You know, maybe we have baby races every day in the morning for a week. Every morning we have six. Maybe that'll work. I, I, I have no idea. But at the end of the day, uh, I want to make sure that I answer everybody's questions in the best possible way that I can. Best way for me to answer this is we have over 120 athletes on this property. They are all working towards one common goal, and that's to race. Whether it's two-year-olds who won't get there till mid-June qualifiers or whether it's our three-year-olds that are supposed to be racing right now or our four or five-year-olds that are training back, we all have a common goal, and that's to get to the races. And nothing can be gained by turning any of these horses out. I looked at the list. There might be three horses that could be turned out right now, realistically. Beach Boutique, uh, Emerald Miss, um, I forget who the other one was. Uh, and I left it up to Harry and Kevin. And they're very upfront about it. There is no good in turning these horses out right now. They're not tired, and they need to stay in shape. And there's always that potential. If you turn them out, they're running around. Those horses aren't standing in a corner of a field eating grass and collecting sunlight like a plant, getting big and fat and shiny. They're running around also. And, you know, there's always the potential that they could get hurt. 
they're not dull. They're not dead. They're not tired. They don't need a rest. So giving them anything other than mild exercise um, right now as, as the athletes they are, I believe could be detrimental aside from everything else. So um, that's my two cents on it. That doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong or, or vice versa. But at the end of the day, uh, decisions have to be made. And I took the advice that I talked to all our trainers about all the horses. I keep a very close eye on all the horses in our health, in our barns right now more than ever. That's why I'm here for the next hour and a half at the barn looking at every single horse. Um, and that job has to be done every day. So rest assured, I'm doing the best I can. I'm working. I've never been as tired as I am right now. As I said the other day in a video, I think it might be just different work that's piling on top of me, but I've been exhausted lately. Um, I feel great now. Like I feel good, but I sleep at night. And um, obviously the concerns that people have are, are mounting on me also. So rest assured, I, as usual, I am doing the best I can. I don't profess to be right about everything, but I have uh, talked to our other trainers, looked at the horses, and looked at the time frame that's potentially given to us. As I said, I believe mid to end May for Ohio, Pennsylvania, shortly after that, Ontario, maybe Illinois, maybe before Illinois too. Um, and then you, obviously you have Indiana, New York, New Jersey and New York. It'd be nice if I think New York, maybe tracks like Tioga and Vernon could open where they're a little uh, out in the middle of nowhere also. So anyway, this is all conjecture. Nobody knows. I don't know, but I am doing the best I can. And I hope that answers everybody's questions. Please, if you have any questions at, at all, just drop me a line. Let me know. Ask me what's this, what's going on with this horse, what's going on with that horse. Everything is fluid, but at the same time, everybody we always profess our clients are the most knowledgeable and informed in racing. And I want to make sure it stays that way. So I uh, hope you had a great weekend. Lots of videos to look at. Lots going on. We are going to be going with a drone on Wednesday. So for now, I will say goodbye. We'll see you guys on Wednesday. Take care.